Greetings from Tokyo. I'm Trip, and welcome to the Hammer of Wrath. This week, you and I are going to improve our inceptors. Let's go. Thanks for joining me in the studio. With Leviathan released and 10th edition in full swing, I thought now would be the perfect time to talk about how you can improve six-year-old models. Today, I'm going to show you how I improved the flight stands for my Inceptors, which were originally included in the 8th edition launch box in 2017. But first, I want to talk a little bit about the Tokyo subway system. Now, I've talked a little bit about this in another video, but honestly, it bears a little further examination. There is a reason why the Tokyo subway system is famous the world over. It goes absolutely everywhere, runs almost all hours of the day, and it's clean and safe and it's also really inexpensive. Relatively speaking, it's the most inexpensive way to travel throughout all of metropolitan Tokyo. And it's not uncommon for younger people who don't have a family and live in the suburbs to simply not have a car and use the subway or bicycles exclusively. I haven't had a car since I moved here three years ago, and it is a strange feeling, but after a while you become accustomed to it and frankly, I don't miss the hassle. Making car payments, paying for gasoline, upkeep and maintenance, insurance, parking, all of those things are an added headache that you simply don't get when using public transportation. The other great thing about the Tokyo subway system is that even though it is comprised of a network of competing rail lines from companies like JR or KO, you can access any of them using the same pass, this a PASMO card. It's an RFID enabled card that you can use at any of the turnstiles in any of the stations and you can charge it weekly or monthly and quite often as a perk for working for one of the larger companies in Japan, employees are often given a travel stipend and the card is automatically loaded for them. Now the other great thing about these cards is that you can take them and use them in vending machines all over Japan. So if you're waiting on the train platform and you could really use a hot coffee, you just swipe it along on the machine and your hot coffee pops out. You can also use them at convenience stores and bakeries as well. Well, that's enough about the Tokyo Metropolitan Subway System. Let's talk about fixing Inceptors. With the launch of 8th edition in 2017 came the Primaris range and the amazing starter box Dark Imperium. And within that box were a set of three Inceptors, the brand new jump troops that are included as part of the set. Now, as anyone who has built these has told you that the flight stands for them are absolutely horrible. Possibly the worst the Games Workshop has ever designed and included. And you can look around online for a lot of different ways to sort of make these work. And all of them are sort of stopgap measures for making something awful just barely passable. But I wanted to explore something a little different. And given that I have access to 3D printing, I decided it was time to improve my six-year-old models. So let me show you exactly how I did it. This Inceptor is from the 8th edition starter set Dark Imperium and is one of my favorite Primaris sculpts. But they came with these universally reviled flight stands that everyone agreed were the worst. They never stuck, they were impossible to glue, and my solution was to drill a hole in the backpack and actually mount it that way. And even though that was sturdy, there was just something about it that I never felt was finished. So I popped them off the stands and while trolling Colts, found these incredible smoke trails. I printed them out, and the clever thing about these is that they're designed to fit directly in the Inceptor's backpack with those pegs. You simply drill out a hole in the existing exhaust port and peg them in. And sure enough, it worked like a charm, but they're leaning a bit far forward. And it's also a bit large. When you compare it to our HQ unit, it sort of towers over it. So I wanted something a little different. I went back to cults and searched for about an hour and found a collection of different debris all for free. I printed them out, mounted them on the old bases, and this is what I had. I skipped the priming phase and went straight to painting my cold gray over top of the printed items. And when that was dry, I washed them with a mix of Drakenoff Nightshade and Lamine Medium to match what I had already done on the existing bases. I simply moved my brush around here, making sure that the wash didn't pool too much in any one place. And when that was dry, I dry brushed it with a combination of cold gray and white to bring out the highlights. And with those simple steps done, we were left with six thematic bases to mount our Inceptors on. The next step is to pin the models to the bases using paperclip. Here I've drilled a small hole into the base and one into the bottom of the model as well, and then using super glue, we'll attach the two parts together. 
But first, we're going to put the pin into the base and check our angle. Now, of course, at first it's not right. So we're simply going to use the needle nose pliers and we're going to bend the post slowly and carefully, checking the angle as we go. And once we've got it exactly where we want it, we super glue the model in place. These are a huge improvement over the clear flight stands, but that's not good enough. So I went back to Colts and keyword searched fire and flame and came across this. It's meant to be a PLA printed lampshade, but I took it, shrunk it down to a few millimeters, filled the inside, stacked them up on my print bed, and printed them out. I mounted them to a popsicle stick and using my airbrush, primed them white, and then painted the tips blue. I popped them off and then using super glue, attached them to the exhaust ports on the Inceptor's jump packs. Well, there you have it, improved Inceptor bases using 3D printing and a little imagination. I'm constantly doing small projects like this in the background, improving models that I worked on in the past, or making changes to things using my access to 3D printing. Quite often, the results speak for themselves. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. It was my genuine pleasure to make and share it with you. If you'd like to help the channel, like, comment, and subscribe, help drive us to the front of YouTube, and you can always check out our Patreon linked in the description below. Remember that joining at any level grants you access to our private Discord server where we work as a small community every day helping each other become better hobbyists through honest and kind feedback. And last but not least, don't forget you can always check out our online t-shirt shop bakingsodatees.com where we sell one-of-a-kind unique designs not available anywhere else. Thanks again for joining me and I'll see you on the next one.